you go to work every day for this purpose, right? Is to bring to life the storytelling that is so important that we all love and to bring you products that you're going to love as well and bring it home and kind of share with other, other folks and have that shared memory experience with us. So um, without more ado, we will talk about collectibles licensing and we'll talk about some of our licenses here and let them introduce themselves in a second. Um, but what we won't talk about is the Force Awakens product line. Okay. So I just want to set that stage right now. We, we will talk about how we're going to have some great stuff in here. <laughs> Oh, thank you. But we have a lot of surprises for you guys. We want to keep those as surprises. And so we actually will not be talking about high collectibles or the first thing. So you have to check your local listings and we'll more talk about that later. Thank you so much. But I want to introduce Brian Odo from the FX. You want to say that? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, we appreciate you spending some time with us here right now. Um, so we're just going to go to some of the podcasts. Some of you guys who went to Celebration have seen this before. We haven't done it much in a lot. So <laughs> some of this, since you were at Celebration, you saw some of this before. But I feel like those of you who have it, here's some things that we're working on. Nice. We're going, we're moving forward on some of our helmets on our collectible replica helmets. And what you see there on the left is we only do products, as you know, that we can get the actual reference for. We try to avoid any type of scanning or 3D model, so it comes as accurate. We can make it as accurately as we can to the original prop. So these, the molds on the left are actually molds from screen use helmet. So we were able to get those, and we were able to cast ours from that as well. So as you can see the Imperial Guard helmet that we got there that's coming out. The next thing is, as you know, most of, this, most of you people who've been buying our helmet, it just comes in a very generic stand. So we thought we'd spice it up a little bit. So what we're going to be doing is coming out with what we call our legend stand, helmet stands. And basically, it has actual prop parts from the film, so they're not sculpted. So they're just like prop replica, so all the armor and everything you see there will actually cast most of it from the original screen we use prop. So these are just a few of them. So a lot of them represent the helm stuff. We are either working on or have reduced in the past, so they will be available separately as well. Then we're going to get a little bit more into our studio scale again. Uh, those are a lot of fun to do. They take a lot of time to work on. But our next release is going to be a smaller version of Tony and Falcon from Empire Strikes Back. And then here is just a little few other things that we're working on. We need the SG, the Pro Joy, the Wiring. Um, this weekend, so if you want to come by and check it out, come on by. Thanks a lot.
celebration was just last weekend. And you see a lot of familiar faces, so I'm glad to see everybody here again for Comic Con. Um, so I'm going to go through some of the items that we are doing at General Giant all the time systems. First up, I want to talk about the Premier Guild, which are which is a, a collector's guild that we have in, three, in, in General Giant that allows you to purchase one of these collectible busts for free. This is just a little background on what we do with these busts. It goes from the concept to the digital scope, and that's the final painted mini bust. This is for the Emperor. At, at the time, we were discussing about doing a uh, holographic version of it. So we concepted out a, just a, a blue holographic version. And we ended up doing a full painted piece on the prototype and liked it so much that we just went and decided to make that one. This is uh, Commander Fay. He's a lesser known character. He was concepted out for episode 3 of Legend of Sith, but he never made it to the final cut of the film. So we took the original design that was done and just expanded on it a little bit. We gave him a different weapon because the pose was not so conducive to a mini bust pose put the rifle over his shoulder, and this shows the digital scope stage, which involves a lot of pieces came together. And then the final piece, which has the hooded helmet and the unhooded helmet, you can switch on and off. Now on to our exclusives. We have, from the 1985 animated droid series, the Boba Fett Jumbo figure. So this is scanned from the original figure, along with the coin that came with the original figure. And we uh, blow this up to six scale size, so the figure is 12 inches, and the coin is probably about three and a half inches in diameter. It's solid metal. And it also comes in the original uh, style backer card, so the art is the same from the droid's backer card. It's, it's a big piece, it's about this big. And R2D2, which is proven to be one of our more popular pieces of the convention. Uh, same technique, we, we got the original figure, we took it apart, we de-engineered it, we scanned it, and then did a digital printout at six scales, so the piece is about six and a half, seven inches tall, and it comes with a coin just like the original piece, and the original package we uh, Next up is our Boba Fett prototype mini bust. Now, this is based on uh, what Joe Johnston originally concepted for Boba Fett. He was supposed to be like a uh, stormtrooper lieutenant. So he was all white, just like the stormtroopers, but he had extra weapons and extra gear. And they did a full suit of this, built it, and did a video test of it. And at some point later, it was decided by George Lucas that this was going to be actually a, a bounty hunter. So he was given more beat up armor, like he'd been around the galaxy a lot. But the, the white Boba Fett is still a, a very interesting piece of Star Wars history, and we wanted to capture that in this mini bus. The new pieces we're working on. This is at our booth. We just premiered it at Comic Con. It's the Sand Trooper from Episode Four of New Hope. Again, we have some reference images that we've taken from the original film. The digital scope, which is I wanted to show you the keyed out version of everything, but there's just so many pieces. It's, it's too big. It's crazy. The backpack is 20 pieces. It's a it's a very complicated piece, but it came out looking very cool. This is six scale, so he stands about 12 inches tall. And Jumbo. <laughs> Jumbo. Jumbo, Jumbo. So what you see below is the original Kenner figure from 1983. We've taken that, taken apart, scanned him, and blown him up to six scale size like the other Jumbo figures in line, Boba Fett and R2D2, like the previous items. And he is about 30 inches long, about 14 inches high. Please come by the booth and see in person. It's something you definitely want to get a look at. Those are the 12 inch figures standing next to him. And this is a shot of a painted piece with the original camera figure in front of him. But you really want to come by the roof and see it. It's a cool piece to see. Oh,
So that was this cool video that we wanted to take of the actual build that we did on the 3D printer of the Java Hut coming out of the resin tray. And it's just kind of cool because it's a, it's a big bath of resin. And once the build is complete, the entire piece comes out at once. And it's just something I wanted to share with everybody. Uh, also, we have these are the Star Wars bookends. We've, we've done this previously. We wanted to re release them in, in the old Star Wars yellow font. So, this is something new for collectors to do. And something I'm excited about is the Mandalorian bookends. We take a Mandalorian symbol that's you know, made famous by Bill Fett and made a bookend set out, of, set out of it. We've given it some weathering and detailing like his armor is, so it's, we know it's from Mr. Fett. Uh, this is the Star Wars Han Solo Hero of Yavin bus. So this depicts Han Solo at the end of the film and he gets the Hero of Yavin medal. And Mr. Luke Skywalker as well. We will be working on a, uh, on a Leia bus as, as soon as these two are complete. And so towards the end of the year you can look for that. And then we have our life-size Kenner R2-D2, which we reviewed at Celebration, and we have a booth this year again. You should totally combine and see it. We've taken the original Kenner figure, scanned it, and blown it up to life-size, so the piece stands probably four feet tall. Let me get a quick video here.
And this is the concept art for the Vader piece. Uh, still in the process right now, um, but it will be here next year. But so this is the target for what we're here to do. And he will have two helmets, I believe, at this time. For our premium, premium format figures, we have our Darth Vader. He had his official unveiling at Celebration. He's here this year at Sci uh, Comic Con. At Sci Show. Comic Con. Okay. Coming up, we have our Darth Maul premium format piece. This is an image of the piece right now and painted. Um, but he's looking pretty fantastic. It's a companion piece to the Savage Press. So he's kind of at an angle, so you can have them both there. Uh, we'll make a nice uh, balance. Uh, this is our Imperial Sand Trooper quarter scale. Um, this is a traditional sculpted piece. He, uh, <coughs> This is just a little, a little, little glimmer of what, what he of the back of his uh, backpack right now. Um, he's still in the skull. So I'm going to share a little bit. Django Fett. Django Fett is being done digitally, um, but this is him without his clothing. So he will have clothing. He won't be bare chested like that. Probably should, but but he will have the uh, combination of hard parts and cut so on. We have our Jawas at the booth right now. They went up uh, shortly after celebration. It's a two pack, uh, and they're two different sizes. They'll have light up illuminated eyes. Um, a bunch of different, they have a couple different guns, a bunch of hands, little accessories, but some very uh, detailed cuts. So, so bandoliers and uh, pouches, vests. They're pretty, pretty cool little figures. Uh, we have R5D4 also went up. He's using uh, R2 body. Newly sculpted head. He's going to have a bad motivator pop up function, so you pull one of his eyes and his motivator will pop up. <laughs> and that's it for the day for him. He's out. But these are some jaws luring him into their cans with some candy. We have our Darth Maul figure on display. He's kind of came as a surprise to everyone. We kept, kept them under wraps, but this is our initially did uh, Darth Maul. It's one of the first few figures that came out with Side Joe, so we were visiting him with all the ways we've learned to do things much better. We're applying it to this figure. He's going to have a new body, new skull, all new parts. There will be none of the parts from the other ones. So, uh, pretty cool. R2Q5. So R2D2 is proving to be quite popular with fans. So you know, we thought, why not do one of the hero ones? This is one of the uh, R2 units you see uh, in the hangar bay when the data arrives in the Death Star. He's also not cutscene, but we wanted to try to find out what the deco was on the back of him. We couldn't find it anywhere, and there's a cutscene from the movie where he goes right by Vader. Kind of see what back of him. He will have lights. He won't have all the accessories as R2D2, but he will have light up functions. And some of the panels will open up on him. But he'll have a nice, clean black almost for finish. Top area looks pretty cool, but it's down the booth as well right now. We have our Imperial ad driver. We're all pretty excited about finally getting this guy out. Following up the TIE pilot, the speeder bike pilot, um, our X Wing Luke, so we're kind of going this pilot series type deal, and it was really nice to get with the main badasses of the Imperial Mike on the C scale. So we just got to get the ad app done now. Just joking. Uh, also announcing continuation of the bounty hunters. Uh, you'll see a little bit of uh, Zuckus' nose is missing, but the part wasn't finished yet, but I definitely wanted to share them with you. Before Lama and Zuckus will be previewed before the end of the year, likely solicited for the year as well. But their process will come along nicely. Yeah, yes. It will complement Boss Guy G8 and our Boba Fett really good. And then there's just one more angry advantage to, to uh, follow up with. So. <laughs> Hopefully, you guys can come by the booth and see the R2D2 project. We had that celebration. Uh, basically, we, we ran our R2D2, we injected a bunch just of plain white plastic and gave it out to a bunch of our friends. And the, Within Sideshow and outside of Sideshow, and some of the pieces that came back were pretty amazing. Uh, we have four uh, podiums devoted to it, and we have ten new pieces there. And if you haven't had a chance to come see it, you should. It takes some time because there's over close to 55 or 60 of them there. They're pretty, pretty cool. And I believe that's it. So thank you all for your time and for coming.
Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us again for this panel. I think we've done this maybe four or five years in a row, and it's always a great chance to get to talk to you, the fans, about our product. I've got a really quick update because uh, this is kind of just uh, uh, an extended, or not extended, but uh, just an update, so to speak, to what I showed at Star Wars Celebration. So, But I do have two new announcements, and these announcements have not been made anywhere not been shown at our booth, so everyone here, you will hear first about two new products that are coming out from us. Nice. Um, you can see these uh, snow troopers, and these are at our booth 2601, and this is part of our Artifacts Plus series, and for those of you that are not familiar with Artifacts Plus, it's a one-tenth scale collectible um, made out of PVC and ABS plastic. Uh, this two-pack, you get multiple arms and legs, so you can do different poses, as you see here. And there's also magnets in the feet, and we include a square magnet uh, uh, metal base so you can uh, actually pose it wherever you'd like on the base. So there's a lot of uh, flexibility in your display options. Uh, the Snow Trooper 2 pack is scheduled to arrive sometime this fall, uh, probably maybe closer to November from what I'm hearing, with a retail price of $84.99. We also, uh, at Celebration, unveiled our ADAPT driver. You can see the uh, paint master at our booth right now. And just like the Snow Trooper 2 pack, uh, he comes with different parts. You can do the three poses that you see here. And this is uh, the continuation of our Hoth wave. We started the Hoth wave with our Celebration exclusive, and now it's going onward. And, um, you know, sky's the limit as far as how it will take uh, uh, the Artifacts Plus. Uh, if we'll continue Empire Strikes Back and, or move into maybe Return of the Jedi, it needs to be seen. So uh, we're definitely always looking for your feedback as to where you'd like to see the line evolve. And this is, these are just some pictures of, of how you can, you know, create some really nice scenes with, with the uh, statues and with this uh, display cabinet or wherever you display your, uh, your collectibles. So they really go well together, especially with the magnetized base. Uh, you can position them in, in different formations, so you can create some really cool scenes. Um, we also made the announcement at Celebration that we'll be continuing our droid. We have a series of droids out, um, a lot of R2 units, and um, we'll be... Uh, taking that further with R5 and R4 units, so we're coming forward to those coming out next year and beyond. And this is one of one of two brand new announcements, and we're going to be partnering up with Barnes & Noble again nice. to offer TC14. Uh, this will be available in fall. Um, the production will be roughly about 1,500 pieces, so it is very limited, so make sure to uh, check out uh, barnesandnoble.com for pre-order uh, information. I'm sure it'll be going up soon. Um, and we'll have all that information also on our Facebook. And they'll be in stores and uh, available online for pre-order. And the second announcement is we'll also be offering the Unipow Trooper through them. This is a single pack, so this is the first time that we've offered Artifacts Plus uh, the Clone Trooper, at least, in a single pack. We've done the Sand Trooper in a single pack, but most of the Storm Troopers and uh, Clone Troopers have come in, in two packs. And this is the first time we're offering a single pack, plus this is the first time we're offering this particular clone trooper, so that it should be um, for uh, collectors of, of uh, clone troopers and what have you. And um, if, like I said, we're a very fan-centric company, so if you want to get in touch with us, you can find us on, on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash Kodobukia. You can send us emails, questions at Kodobus.com, or you can shop with us at Kodobus.com. And if you get a chance, come by the booth, 2601. You can check out these and uh, other older Star Wars releases that we have on display. Thank you, everyone. Woo! So we're going to bring up Tamashii Nations now. They're the latest addition to our licensing portfolio for high-end collectibles. We started off in Japan. Probably have you heard about the Samurai line, but I'm not going to steal any more thunder from Adam. So come on up and be part of your debut at Comic-Con as part of our family. Thank you, everybody. It's an uh, honor to be here. Uh, as you know, we're the newest member of the uh, Bulls Licensee family. Uh, this is our first time here. We did do a presentation in uh, at Celebration. So some of you have uh, seen this before. Some of you know us. But for those of you who, who don't, uh, just a quick explanation on our brand. Uh, many of you know Bondi. Tamashi Nations is basically Bondi's premium collector's label. And um, we have a lot of historic, a lot of history in Japan uh, with certain robot motifs that have 
basically been uh, reinterpreted uh, into some recent products as well as this year. And uh, one of the things that we're really going to blow up for is articulation, create a piece of material like die cast. But uh, today we're going to talk about some of our uh, sculpting talent that we work with in Japan and the unique aesthetic that we uh, bring our product out. And um, Takeya Takeyuki, um, he works with uh, a lot of companies in Japan at Kotobuki as well. Uh, and uh, he's uh, one of the talents that have brought us the movie realization series that we have uh, on display in our booth today. And uh, this movie realization series is basically an interpretation of Star Wars in a feudal Japan era uh, aesthetic. And uh, initially, we just uh, was a little over a year ago at uh, the Tokyo uh, Toy Fair where we debuted this, and it received a huge, uh, was well received all over the press. And uh, we are now selling. Uh, it's currently available right now at booth three five four five at our distributor Bluefin at the Tomashi Nations booth. You can get the first one, the Darth Vader Samurai General, and we're also selling our foot soldier stormtrooper. We have some gifts for you today for the raffle. And we've shown um, some of our future release plans in celebration for those of you who were not there. We'll show you some stuff. And I have some brand new things to show you uh, that first time uh, presentation here at the Comic Con panel as well for two items. So, uh, movie realization for the soldier, Sand Trooper. We've seen this before. This is scheduled for winter. And uh, also, we're looking into some new, um, basically, uh, reinterpretations of the Stormtrooper as a war drummer, what I call. Uh, as an archer and a spearman. Uh, this got a lot of booze and Oz last time, and now we uh, have it on display at our booth. Uh, got booze and Oz at Celebration. Uh, so this is the first time display we have here at our booth, so please come by and check out the uh, Samurai Royal Guard. And uh, so this is a new uh, SD Comic Con panel first look at a different version of Darth Vader that we presented a sketch for before, but the armor is different. Um, the crest is, is a, uh, of course, Death Star. And what I'm going to show you next was a sketch, and hoping to get some boos and ahs on, on this one. Uh, Ooh, this first one. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So uh, this is, um, yeah, this is Boba Fett as a Lord of the Samurai Roni. Um, we've got some really special things going on here. Um, of course, on his uh, left shoulder plate, there's the Mandalorian uh, insignia. Uh, he's got a bunch of uh, hidden weaponry as well. I'll show you another slide. Uh, a lot of things going on here that are, are kind of ninja-esque, like kunai-style blades, uh, concealed blades. And uh, he's not on display, but this is the first time you're getting a look at him, so nobody's have seen this uh, prototype yet. Uh, so what do we have um, in the future? Um, you know, it's rare that we're based in Japan, so it's rare that we get to interact with our fans. Um, I put a decibel uh, uh, meter application on it, maybe get some more who's and ahs. I'm going to throw out some ideas out there. Uh, if you guys could give me some responses on that in the form of who's and ahs or applause or screams, uh, and then you can basically choose what products we make next. Um, for the force users out there, please don't tamper with the decibel meter. Huh? Huh? Going with the first one, uh, how about Darth Maul as an Oni or Japanese? Woo! Woo! Uh, next one, Yoda as a Senin or Riku Sage or mm. after a legendary. Cool! Mm -hmm. Nice. And uh, this one's a highlight. Like Django and Boba Fett as Lone Cub, Wolf and Cub, so Lord of the Samurai and his son. Woo! Okay, uh, droids as temple ornament spells. We actually got a drawing on this one. Got a couple more for you. Uh, Adat Walker and Samurai Horse Friday. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> and we also have to throw in Leia Organa and Akira. Woo! Yeah! Woo! I've got the number readings here, and uh, we'll definitely take that feedback and uh, make some cool product for you guys. Thank you so much. Really Woo! Stop by our booth. We have the, uh, again, Samurai General, Darth Vader, and a Stormtrooper uh, on sale there. Thank you so much. Woo! Thank you, Adam. That was great. I like the decibel application. I might have to. <laughs> 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 um, 
So right now we're going to leave some time for question and answer. So if you have something burning that you want to ask us or ask the panelists, please come on up and um, make a line here at the microphone. And we'll be happy to take some questions and answers. We'll leave a little time for that. And then we'll then leave a little time for some raffles. So we like treats. So feel free to come on up and start the answer. Good. Uh, my question is for uh, EMX. Uh, in reference to your studio scale uh, ships, they are smaller than the previous ones that came out for uh, Master Replicas. But are but are they still sorry? Oh. But are they still uh, studio scale? Like what was actually used during the movies? Actually. <laughs> Actually, the only one that can be scaled is the Millennium Falcon. All the rest of the models you see there are uh, actual studio scale models. But you see they're all different sizes, they're not all the same scales because they were made uh, relative to what they were going to be used for, the perspective or something else. So the only one that's reduced scale is the Millennium Falcon. Hey, my question's for uh, Gentle Giant, and I was just wondering, um, as you sort of get through the original vintage line in doing a jumbo form, are, do you have any plans or ideas towards continuing sort of jumboizing other Star Wars figures from the past? Uh, we're not sure. We, we still have a few more figures to get through, and we want to address the entire original camera line first before we start looking at other versions from later, like Power of the Force and whatnot. But, uh, you know, we'll see what the future holds. Um, my question is for Matt at Sideshow. The, uh, I understand it's, it's a ways out, but the six scale um, Macquarie Vader, are you all planning on following that up with the Boba Fett and the Stormtrooper, like with the statues? Yes. <laughs> yes and yes. <laughs> Mine's for EFX. Are there any plans to continue on like the Obi Wan reveal lightsaber or any other like weapons, lightsabers, blasters, and any future products? Uh, yeah, we're definitely going to be start working on the uh, lightsabers again. Uh, blasters and guns causes a little bit of a problem for import and export into foreign countries. Uh, but you know, we are working on some stuff. How far the guns are going to get? Right? We couldn't say at this point, but definitely we're going to be readdressing the lightsabers. Uh, Obi Wan reveals more. In uh, we both reveal and static. Are you guys going to do anything with uh, Chewie or Han in Samurai? Sorry, for Chewie and Han, are you going to include them in the Samurai? It's, it's something we consider. Uh, we did a little old celebration. Uh, maybe for the next presentation, I'll throw them up there and try to get that off the festival. But yeah, maybe uh, Chewbacca has a, a Japanese Yeti or something like that. Thank you for the feedback. No more questions. Okay. Anyone? No? Alright, great. So we're going to bring our podcast. You have the power to wipe out the human race, and I have to destroy you. Oh, I see you guys are also doing a superhero against superhero movie. Well, 2016's gonna be the language! Anyway, Affleck, what made you jump ship? I 